All right, so I don't have a bike in the background, unfortunately, but this video is basically to explain the Trek financial problems, and I'm gonna be offering Trek free financial advice on how to fix their problems. And I'm also gonna explain what they're doing in this video. Uh, so John Burke, hey, what's up? It's me again. Um, this, is, this is literally like, they can watch this. This is a free financial advice video. And, and this will solve a lot of their problems. I almost guarantee this will solve a lot of their problems. Um, I have my bike shirt on. I hope that that makes up for the lack of physical bikes in this video. Um, but number one, um, you got to cut out disc brakes on bikes below the price of like $4,500. We have SRAM Apex access now, so... Yeah, any bike below four grand, uh, no disc brakes. Um, and I, I'm gonna explain why. Um, part of the reason why is because, well, first off, we have the brand new, um, you know, 105 12 speed, and I think you can get that in a mechanical, probably with maybe routed cables with the old disc brakes, maybe routed mechanically. Um, it's because, so bike shops, Trek vertically integrated, they have their own stores, and independent bike shops. The problem with disc brakes, uh, and I could do a whole other video on it, is they require a really high level of quality control to get them lined up and get them working right. Um, so what will happen is well, if someone who's just flying through bikes can build a ton of them and they're stuck on one bike for like two hours because you have one disc brake that's really poorly made and the mount's poorly made. And this isn't tracked, there's just other brands and they can't get the fucking thing to, excuse me, to, to line up and it's like ding, zing, zing. You don't want that. That's terrible and that's bad. And and what happens is people rush through it and then customers will get really mad and be like, hey, you know, I took this bike for a test ride and it feels like a POS and the, the rotors are tinging everywhere. So um, that's really bad. You don't notice it as much on those price points where you start having SRAM access, or at least in my experience. Um, and you have like the lower volume bikes um, where the quality control and precision can really be honed in. So that's... That's something I would ax all disc brake bikes, um, other than like mountain bikes, obviously, but th those are a little different. I'm talking like road bike. Uh, th this is mainly going to be like a road bike type video because that's the cash cow for Trek. Lance Armstrong got Trek on the map with road bikes. I'm talking about road bikes specifically in this video. Um, just, to, just to clear that up, hybrids, probably similar thing I would recommend. Of course, it depends on what riding you're doing. So that is number one. Um, number two. Um, Trek is cutting most of their SKUs, which I explained in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, definitely go check it out. Um, but what that means is they're trying to run lean, which is a term in business that they use to cut costs, basically to increase their margins. And that's all what any of this is at the end of the day. Anyways, everybody wants their freaking margins. That's why you see every... Um, bike, every one of these bikes is made in one of these countries with like cheap ass labor. That, that's, that's why they're doing it. Um, it's not cause they, they care or they're being good companies. They want the biggest margin they can get. Um, just like any greedy billionaire, like Elon Musk, you know, greedy billionaire. Um, you know, he wants his margins. Um, you know, Apple wants their margins. Everybody wants their freaking margins. So I see track what you're trying to do. You're trying to Lean out the business, simplify things. You want bigger margins. Um, so that's um, something to, to keep in mind. I mean, if you want to, I guess Trex is a privately owned company, but if you want to invest in a company, um, you know, that's actually good if they're going to have higher margins. But you want bigger margins. Uh, I would say basically focus on the bikes, the largest margins. The bikes, like the Project One bikes for Trek, those don't have big margins because a lot of it's hand, stuff that's hand done. Focus on the bikes that are like um, two to like five grand and you have a better margin on those and focus on those. And you can still do it with um, rim brakes. That's part of the reason people went to disc brakes because you don't have to like uh, manufacture the wheels and the rims as much and put all your braking surface. You can just have a metal rotor that um, people can like pay a hundred bucks to replace. So uh, I mean, I understand you want the margins, but seriously, like, you know, people want to pay a couple grand and have a really light bike. And that's another thing, another problem. Bike prices went crazy high 
and the performance for the bikes that most people are buying is going down. So you want to change that. Shimano just dropped this brand new one of five twelve speed group set. Uh, you have the access stuff, and of course, I get all the reasons people might want disc brakes, but seriously, in that price point, like you're using aluminum wheels most of the time. Maybe you work with the group set manufacturer a little bit, but you don't really have to in the entry level bikes because Claris and Sora rim brake anyways. So focus on that. Bring the rim brake back for a lot of that stuff. Um, those people are really going to appreciate that extra weight savings because that adds up a lot more um, in that price range. Because um, if you've never been on a road bike, part of the best thing about getting on a road bike is like, like man, that thing just took off. Um, so that that is really important. And then... I would say, you know, you know, Trek specifically, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, Trek bike shops are kind of run like Walmarts, right? So you have a lot of people in there that may not really be into bikes as much. It may just be kind of like a job or you have some people in there for um, just various maybe corporate reasons and things like that. Um, so I guess that would be another thing like, you know, get get some of these garbage people out of there that are like harassing people or whatever, just not really being good because they're too lazy to find someone that really is good for the job and really cares about cycling and cares about getting more people on bikes. I really think that's important. Like someone who just really like lives and breathes this stuff. And like, that's who you want these cycling companies to be made up of because if not, you wind up with stuff like this where it's just kind of money making stuff at the very bottom and I'm paying two thousand dollars or US dollars on the US so US dollars to have a bike that weighs like over twenty pounds and you know is harder to work on all for the cop out of well you know what it's more versatile. Yep, maybe it is more versatile but I want it to accelerate faster. Um that that's kind of what you know makes me fall in love with the bike how it accelerates how it feels if it feels good if whoever's telling me if gcn's telling me that it's the best bike out there the best thing out there this is what i need or if a person at your bike shop's telling you this is what you need or a person at a trek direct own shop's telling you this is what you need but i don't feel it my heart doesn't feel it that's wrong that's wrong there's there's no video on YouTube or anything or any cycling industry person, um, maybe that not into bikes that can tell me that that's how a road bike should feel because it's not. So seriously, focus on that, the care to the customers. That's why Canyon is such a failure because Canyon doesn't. And yes, I did recommend Canyon during um, coronavirus, but that's because you couldn't get many bikes at the time. From other manufacturers but that's why there's such a failure in other ways because they don't work with bike shops they don't connect with customers in the way that like most people don't know how to work on bikes they don't give that support that these people need that's what bike shops need to be they need to be support that people need it needs to be people that care and direct direct own shops if they're going to do the whole midwestern thing of hey um yep we really care yep we care about inclusivity diversity all the um everything itty um but oh um you know something's going wrong or this is making me uncomfortable or this is and they're like oh um nope sorry um yep uh try and figure it out um yep uh you know i i, I can't deal with that right now that's not good that's not good they they know better they should do better than that um a lot of people really care about cycling they go to work for these things and they're just boss around like let's make more money let's do this it's not about money focus on the cycling first focus on the customers focus on the the brand and you know the heart of cycling and then the money comes following after